Hello and welcome to my new course, The Dummies Guide to Practical Quantum Computing with IBM Qiskit. Our current classical computing technology is based on bits or binary digits 1 and 0. 1 for on state and 0 for off state. Even though it has two states, a bit can exist in only one state at a time. Just like a coin lying on a table, either it will be heads up or it will be tail up. But quantum computing is entirely different. It uses the quantum mechanical property of tiny subatomic particles like electrons to perform computation. Instead of this 1 and 0, a qubit or a quantum bit uses the spin position. Either it will be spin up or it will be spin down. We can consider this as the 1 and 0 of qubit. But unlike this binary bits, our qubits can exist in both the states simultaneously. And this property is called as a superposition and this superposition is making the difference between a classical computer and a quantum computer. Just like a coin that keep on spinning, we could say that it's having an equal probability of existing in our head or tail position. Or we can say that it's both head and tail at the same time. For example, consider a simple one bit calculation to find the best Path. A classical computer with a single bit have to set the bit to zero to go to the left path at first and later set the bit to one to go to the right path and find the best path out of this. But a quantum computer with a single qubit can go through both the path simultaneously and find a solution within a single shot in just half of the time that the classical computer took to find the solution. And as the number of qubit increases, this speed increases exponentially compared to the classical computer counterparts. That makes this course relevant and futuristic. Let's see what are the topics that are included in this course. In the first section of our course, which will be starting from session 1 to session 6, we will be learning the essential details about quantum mechanics. We will start with an introduction to quantum mechanics and then we will try to have a quick understanding about the difference between quantum mechanics and classical physics. The dual nature of particles, double slit experiment, superposition, quantum entanglement, etc. in a very simple way. And and in the next session, we will discuss about the difference between classical bits and quantum bits called qubits. Creating, representing and processing a classical bit, then how a qubit is generated, what's inside the qubit. These details we will be discussing in the next session. We will also discuss the structure of a quantum computer and the way qubits are dealt within it. And then we will have a session in which we will learn about scalars and vectors. How vectors and matrices are used to represent the state of a quantum bit. Now we can proceed with the gates. At first we will learn about classical gates. How it works and also different types of classical gates. And after that we will learn about the popular quantum framework by leading technology companies who research on quantum computers the merits and demerits of these popular quantum frameworks. We can now proceed with the practical part of our course using a Python distribution called Anaconda. Then we will proceed with installing and testing Qiskit, the easy to use quantum framework by IBM. And once we have Qiskit in our computer and the quantum simulator running, we will be coding our first quantum circuit 
using the simple quantum gate called the poly x gate later we will try customizing the input and output to this poly x gate and verify the operations and once we verified in the simulator it's time we can try that in a real quantum computer ibm provides access to their number of quantum computers located in research facilities around the world using ibm quantum experience interface we can simply create our poly x gate circuit to work with a real quantum computer and get the output and then we will check how we can represent matrices as state vectors using dirac notation hope you have heard about the bracket notation we will see how a poly x gate matrix can be represented as a state vector using this notation and similarly we will proceed with another gate called the poly y gate we will check the state vector and try with the operations in our qiskit simulator at first and then we will implement it in a real ibm quantum computer and then one more gate called as a poly z gate or poly c gate and in the next session we will learn about eigen values and eigen vectors of our already learned poly x y and z gates and after that we will learn about a new gate called as the hadamard gate or the h gate this gate is capable of generating superposition from a classical qubit we will check the block sphere and the histogram representation of the output using our qiskit using h gate we will also try creating few custom circuits in which we will try to replicate an x gate operation using only the h and z gate and in the next circuit we will check the phenomenon of collapsing the superposition when we try to measure a qubit and after h gate we will have some quick sessions dealing with few more quantum gates the first one called as the r5 gate and later we will check two more gates called as the s and t gates and finally we will deal with the u and i gates those were the gates with single qubit operations now we will proceed with gates that are capable of multi qubit operations we will be using a package called qiskit notebook for representing the multi qiskit state vector at first we will be using x and h gates combined to form a multi qubit circuit and later we will be using two qubits and a single gate to create a multi qubit circuit and then we will proceed with a real multi qubit gate called as the c not gate or the controlled not gate we will learn more about this c not gate the truth table and its operations at first we will try the c not gate with classical qubits we will implement it in qiskit later we will try the c not gate with only one superposition qubit and afterwards we will try with both superposition qubits and like other previous gates we will also proceed with implementing the c not gate in a real quantum computer hosted by ibm c not gate is a very important gate we can create identity circuits using this c not gates these are equivalent circuits that can mimic the operations of other gates which are just theoretical gates that cannot be implemented in a real quantum computer at first we will create an identity circuit using a c not gate wrapped with h gates so that it will act like a c not gate placed in opposite direction then we will try another equivalent circuit using c not gate in between hadamard gates this will generate operations of a controlled c gate or a controlled z gate or a c z gate and similarly we can create equivalent circuit for another theoretical gate called as a c y gate or the controlled y gate and also a gate called as a swap gate like the name indicates it can swap the qubit state between qubits we will also create a circuit identity or a circuit equivalence for this swap gate like that one more equivalent circuit 
for get called as the Tifoli gate. We will create the circuit identity and circuit equivalence for the Tifoli gate and we will implement that in our Qiskit. And that's all with the gates. Then we will proceed with learning an important algorithm called as the Deutsch Joshua algorithm or DJ algorithm which demonstrates quantum parallelism. The underlying mathematics and theory of this DJ algorithm is very complex and we are just trying to learn it in a very peripheral or shallow manner. At first we will see the problem that the algorithm is dealing with and later we will learn about the algorithm design and then we will proceed with implementing it in Qiskit and we will be verifying the results. Before we conclude the course, we will proceed with discussing about two interesting and very important technologies related to quantum computing. The first one is called as the QKD or quantum key distribution to generate and distribute cryptographic keys across geographic locations through long distance using a virtually non-hackable communications link. And then we will discuss another interesting topic called as the quantum teleportation, which is a technique for transferring quantum information from a center at one geographical location to a receiver at some far distance away. And that's all about the topics that are currently included in this quick course. The code, the Jupyter Notebook files used in this course has been uploaded and shared in a folder. I will include the link to download them in the last session or the resource section of this course. You are free to use this code in your projects with no questions asked. Also, after completing this course, you will be provided with a course completion certificate which will add more value to your portfolio. So that's all for now. See you soon in the classroom. Happy learning and have a great time.